What is up guys? We are here with another over prime video. How is everyone doing today? We are talking about Terra, the thick mommy night woman. I love her. I I mean I loved her, I should say. Um I'm not really a fan of her new ult, but other than that, she's pretty fun. Uh, I'm excited to try her out. Uh tomorrow it's going to go live at 12:30 a.m. on the 25th. So the night of the 24th, I'm going to be live for that. So very excited, but let's take a look at what she is sporting here. We got new skins. We got a new Zena skin, Rampage skin, which I'm buying all of these, and a Terra skin, which I'm also buying. So I'm broke. We got Zenas. Very nice. Uh, I wish it was the fur one that was leaked that I saw, but it's not. I still like the skin quite a bit. We got Terra's beautiful skin. This looks straight out of Black Desert or something, dude. It looks so good. I'm so excited for that. And then this Rampage skin. I'm going to play a lot of Rampage with this Aquila skin, dude. I was so excited. Rampage and Sev finally got their skins back from the beta, and they look fucking phenomenal. And we got Master Terra looking very saucy with the fucking effects. Very good Master skin. Look at the axe, dude. Oh, my God. Such a good skin. So we got some buffs for Serith, Marty, Countess, uh, Crunch, Brux, and we got nerfs for Boris and Shinbi. Um, it looks like the wolf item, the healing, the auto attack, mana, uh, nano machines, and a stun. I know the stun's getting a nerf. It's getting a 1.5 or one or 0.5 second nerf, 0.8 second nerf. All right, so Countess getting more healing on hit. Still not going to be a 0.4%. Not going to be really that effective. Uh, it's just. On landing the hit, increased health recovery on enemy hero upon landing the skill at seven percent. Due to Countess's melee attack traits, she was relatively disadvantaged position in lane early on. The slower growth made it difficult to deal damage in the mid to late game. Therefore, we want to adjust the health recovery amount of spin slash RMB to improve lane sustainability, allowing for faster growth and more effective lane fights in the early game. This is going to be need to be, need to be buffed to like tenfold. I'm talking about like twenty percent. It's ridiculous that it's at what uh, two point four. I forget the ability heals honestly, because unless you go life steal, you don't feel it. Dimensional Energy Barrage for Marty is getting buffed. She's getting a power coefficient increase as well. Dimensional uh, Energy Barrage RMB is a crucial DPS skill in early lane fights, but its low damage output and long cast time put it at a significant disadvantage against other caster heroes. As a result, we want to adjust the damage of Marty's Dimensional Enemy Barrage to provide more balance in early lane fights against The problem is just, not just the, it's just yeah, the early matters, but they buffed the coefficient, which means the late game is going to improve as well. And her early game is nasty. Uh, her early game is pretty shit, though, I will admit. Her Marty's early game is not good. Her late game is fucking disgusting. It's absolutely insane how much damage she can do. And also, she has a lot of CC. So, very OP. <laughs> Sarath getting a buff. Dude, I've been popping off on Sarath, dude. Holy. 6% uh, increase on her right click. So, she's going to be schmacking. I hope they nerfed the cooldown. They did, or buffed the cooldown. They did. They buffed the cooldown in six seconds. So, that is almost a three seconds, 3.5 second cooldown, I think. Back to normal, baby. Yeah, from seven seconds to six seconds. Um, they also increase the amount of enemies damage. Wow, that's crazy. Bird damage is also increased by 15. Sarath only has one main skill, Angel's Wing Beats, for dealing damage in early lane exchanges, and has reached level six, or wait, and must reach level six and acquire some Angel Beats to deal damage based on basic attacks. This makes her significantly weaker in early fights. That is untrue, by the way, against enemy heroes until level six. You have to play her like a traitor. Because remember, you have your E. You have to dodge someone's ability. Um, you can win most of your early lane fights with Serith, even now. Um, I play her in the jungle mostly because I like going full damage Serith. I don't like hybrid Serith, but full damage Serith in the jungle is great already. It feels really good outside of not being able to catch people, which is why you build claw and everything. But I'm excited for these buffs. Uh, <laughs> I'm what am I? Who am I to judge their balancing? You know, backpedal, please, please, please. They're actually changing it. Please add tower, like just more gold. Add more things. I hope this isn't just a giant balance patch. I hope there's like actual fundamental changes. How do I feel about this? Good. I don't play solo Serith. I only play jungle Serith usually, but solo Serith, again, I usually win, so I'm not really sure how bad she really is. I haven't been playing her too much, but right click still slaps. So once you get her old, super easy. Crunch charge. So you 13 seconds. So it scales from 13 down to 11. So you start off slow. He's getting a buff too. 40 extra damage. Mana cost reduced by five. Crunch blow increased to 40. There's a lot of base increases. I don't build him full damage though. Cooldown has been adjusted for her for her stun to 10 seconds. His encore has been nerfed by two. Crunch's average damage contribution in fights has decreased significantly. Previously, Crunch's problem was that it, his early to mid game jumping limits to spread by his underperforming in fights and jungling because people are going full damage. We have to maintain Crunch's early damage output while increasing his mid to late game output to ensure parity with other junglers so that we do not repeat the problem of excessive fast juggling speed. I don't know who they're referencing, by the way. Zena, like who who are they referencing? Like 
it's hard to tell what they're balancing off of because they balance off of like high tier play and it's really hard to uh, unknown. Brock's getting a 2% nerf on his RMB, interesting. Um, his grip getting a cooldown adjustment increased. Thank goodness. I thought we were going to decrease it. Nice. Okay. So it's getting, they should do that. They should do it again. Um, but he's getting a damage buff significantly. The monocost, uh, the monocost is being reduced. His dash is being reduced by 0.5. His fear of the chieftain scourge's ult being increased by 50. And the stun is being increased to 1.4 seconds. That's a long stun. Dude. Was it even 1.4 before? Grux has also seen significant drop in his average damage contribution in the fights. Previously, Grux's problem was high skill damage, which allowed him to not true. Sarath had high skill damage too, but you didn't, that wasn't it. I mean, I guess they nerfed her. Allowed him to kill enemies instantly with skill combos. Never insta- I've never been one shot by a Grux. I get one shot by Kalari's and Zenas, not by Grux's. They don't get away with full damage. However, he currently falls short compared to other warrior heroes. Like who? Specifies. Fang Mao? Kwong? Like who is he falling short? I want to know, because you buffed Sarath, right? Like who was the strongest warrior for you in this patch? I really want to know. Boris, <laughs> who got a nerf, by the way. Um, specifically, the fear of the chieftain uh, increased physical power to make it less effective at level six. Another older heroes wait, making it, wait, increases physical power two percent, making it less effective at level six than other heroes. Ultimates. This is what I've been saying for a long time. They literally said it here. It scales to percent power, percent power. People were like, go full damage Grux, whatever you like, or don't go full tank, whatever. If you go full damage Grux. You have to skill to his power. So if you go like half power and then half defense, you have to build a lot of power for his ult to mean something if you're gonna be full damage. So if you're not, if you, you might as well just go full tank to be a massive wall for your tank, right? Or for your team. You could still get two damage items, but people would all in damage instead. Again, he doesn't come online until late because the scaling matters later. Cause you need a lot of and you need a lot of power. That's why you probably saw a drop. Just don't build him full damage. Just build him two damage items and then go full tank, right? Like that's how you, that's how, we, he's a warrior, right? Sarath is different, obviously. She can just do a lot of damage without that, but I build her full damage anyways. Stimulus during Awakening increased by 20%. The slow effect is now 50%. And the two second 50% slow, that's pretty effective. The cooldown has been buffed. The thump skill health coefficient damage has been reduced. What is thump? Does anyone know? That's not claw. Yeah, I don't know what thump is. I have no idea what that. I don't know what that is. What is thump? Stimulus is the is the speed up. Th oh, it's the knock up. Okay, so the knock up damage has been reduced. That's good. I think it shouldn't have that much damage if it's going to be that annoying. Add diminishing returns to your game, please. Cooldown has been adjusted to nine seconds for a thump. That's whatever. I don't spam. I don't even use it really. Um, health coefficient has been reduced by 0.5, so you're doing less damage with your claw, which he should do less damage. I think he's going to need bigger nerfs for damage wise. Um, and then his awakening skill has been increased by five seconds. Until the update 111, Boris's uh, average damage output was specifically different from the average number of other tanks, 1,500. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's calm it down. Hold, 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 hold. Let, let, hold on. Let's think about this. From the average damage of other tanks, 1,500. They're talking about over the course of the whole game. That's the average damage. Tanks OP, I guess. Dude, hold on. This is def. They're talking about overall, like per game average, they're hitting 15K. That is a pitiful damage. I hit that much on Aurora daily. And like Aurora literally is the weakest uh, warrior in the game. Or sorry, uh, soul liner. She doesn't do as a lot, like a lot of damage. How on earth is that the average? That's a very low average, dude. You would expect that since we're in a tank meta, tanks are doing like 25 to 30k on average on like most games, right? But that's not happening. Where are they pulling their numbers from? They're, like, it's so weird. Anyways, however, after the 111 average really due, Boris's damage increased to 1600. This proved to be more efficient than intended. I don't know what, like, where are you getting these numbers from? Could we see some like charts? Like, what games are you scaling? Are you scaling off of ranked, a casuals? What are you talking about? Anyways, I didn't even see Shimbi in the buffs and nerfs. Temper is versus me and a slightly nervous. They didn't do anything about his odd. I was really hoping they were going to change it. No, I still going to feel like shit to play. Terrible character design so far. Um, the available time to use the second charge after the skill has been changed. Wait, what? Oh. It was three seconds. Wait, hold on. Was it not three seconds before? I guess it's four seconds. As an assassin and caster, should be excelled at delivering high instant damage to the ability through health recovery and parrying. They were people that assassin should be able to take down enemies quickly, but the cost of difficult survivability. However, Shimbi's current state with health recovery and light 
Memory's R and B skill resulted in low risk, high return situation. You want to adjust memory's ability to clarify her role as an assassin. The cool the cooldown on her second charge will be adjusted to prevent it from being used. Uh... Hold on. So I'm so confused about the light memories. The available time to use the second charge after the skill has been changed. So you can't use it as fast, obviously. But the cooldown for the second charge has been changed. I don't know what this means. This isn't that means it lasts longer. It it seems like because it's a three second window before you can reuse it. it. Aren't they just buffing that, making it easier to like? There's a four second reuse window. Oh, that's weird. Anyways, she was nerfed. I guess I'm uh, pretty sure she has a four second instead of a three second. So you have more time to think about what you want to do. I don't <laughs> kind of not a nerf, but I guess it is. All right, we're done with hero changes. Uh, overall, I mean whatever they didn't. Do, they hit Boris right. Everyone else is just just warriors and Marty. I think everything else is fine. Um, they oh they didn't hit Countess right either. If they were trying to make her feel better to play, didn't accomplish it. So, I guess L. All right, going on to the items. So High Priest Constellation magical power is 40, 300, 10 percent, five. So you're gonna get five health increase, and we're getting a five percent magical coefficient increase when it comes to heal. So more power equals more healing. Slight buff, not really a big deal. Um. For Decker and Richter, who are support lags specifically buffs to allies, we want to adjust the effects and stats of crucial items so that even here the limited support skills can effectively protect their allies. They have every support, every skill they have outside of their... Like, hold on, Decker has... Every, outside of Relief, she has a slow, a wide AoE slow, you know, that does damage, whatever, but it also reduces attack speed. She has a cage, which is a support skill. She has a stun, which is a support skill. That's three skills right there. You just don't have items to support any of those skills. Richter has a silence. He has damage, which, again, that's a damage skill. Um, he has a silence, he has a hook, which is a support skill, he has his ult that CCs them, which is supposed to be a support skill, so he has three support skills, and then he has, like, the one little whip thing, is it, like, no, man, that's weird, they, they're both supports, so, um, this has been nerfed again, but it's on a shorter cooldown, oh, no, it's, it's, okay, never mind, the shield doesn't last as long, and it's been increased in price, I think it's gonna must have items for warriors and certain rangers, warriors, what? Assassin warriors who's building this on warriors and warriors aren't even being played apparently. That's so weird And yeah, it is being built on rangers. Well rest in peace. This item is expansive Interesting, um, this might not be a must-have anymore for me it's weird interesting Hmm too expensive other cheap pet items. Anyways, that was nerfed um, Favorite skill players we believe the difficulty of purchasing the item is relatively low for these players with that in mind we want to increase its cost making it a high risk coverage an item and that's fine I guess uh, most of these things have too much pen on it anyways. I think they should need to nerf them. It's too easy to get a lot of pen and they just dominate, so. Um, Shockwave is getting a, yeah, 0.8 second nerf. It's pretty interesting. The high purchase rate of Shockwave generates led to an overabundance of its effect in fights. Yep, and there's no diminishing returns in your game. Just want you guys to know that. You need diminishing returns so the stuns don't last as long. I can survive. Uh, in a sense of I can survive for players who purchase it. It can be frustrating for multiple players to be hit by its stun. Yeah, by multiple people having the item. I just want to adjust the stun duration to uh, reduce this restriction and balance given the long term, given the long stun duration for rangers and casters. Um, this is being increased. As a result, in today's fast paced meta, its early purchase has a disproportionate impact on early fights. I mean, I guess. I don't ever build this. I don't think anyone who I see dominate ever really has this outside of like ambitions or something. Uh, that's weird. Anyways, that's being nerfed. <laughs> okay, that's weird. Um, 700 mana. This is being nerfed as well. The purchase of Uncanny Trick is combat due to its high mana amount. This allows for constant skill use without running out of mana. So just the max mana amount to give players a sense of mana depletion during long fights. This is how it should have been. I think the mana was crazy, but again, this item isn't like enough for a lot of people. So it doesn't give pen or anything. I don't know. It's weird, but like this item is good, I guess, for a lot of people who run out of mana. But it's not something that I there looks like they're buff it like nerfing the auto attack build kind of, but I don't know. It's weird. That's the end of the uh, balances. And we have this one. 750. Oh, they nerfed it. Since Baka was released, healing and machines have become popular and the, the only increase with the release of Boris, making both heroes highly efficient. This has led to heroes having a sustainability that is too strong in a continuous fight. That is not true. A fight ends in 10 seconds. Wait, huh? They're nerfing it because Mako, who has to leave... The point is you have to leave combat for 6 seconds. What? You have to leave the fight... So if I'm playing Boris, I have to not be getting hit by anything, leave the fight for six seconds. Boris is a little bit of an outlier because of the way he works, but 
this item isn't OP. You're just nerfing it for two specific characters, which Mako doesn't get benefit of, by the way. He needs it to survive. But if again, that's because he, he kills himself while he heals. But again, if you are attacking or hitting actively, especially as Boris, you have to leave a fight for six seconds. It means you're being useless. Mako is different because he can heal while it happens. But even then, it's like you still can't be getting hit or this deactivates for six whole seconds. A fight can be over by 10 to 12 seconds already. Like, it's so weird. We're getting new animations, getting an Aurora, Steel, Shinbi, Boris, and a Delica one. We're getting a whole training rework. You're going to be able to, like, set the, like, actual, um, like, set the uh, armor, like, the level. I don't know about the armor, sorry. But set the HP. I don't know about the armor, though. Let's see. Um, it doesn't see anything about armor. You can level immediately, which is really nice. Um, you can create remove inhibitors. We'll be added to training settings, structures, teons. Remove the skill cooldown. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I basically you're just gonna. Oh, when this feature activated, the cooldowns on all skills can be set. will be removed. That was super nice. So, yep, they're changing everything. You can set like an HP kind of a bar and like kill them. It's really nice. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Nothing really big outside of that. Try to see if there's anything else that's like really cool just in case. Slow motion setting, awesome. I can make those better. I think you guys like that Zena video that I put out. All like five of you who watched it. That was fun. I liked making that actually. It was terribly edited though. Interesting. They. I wonder what skills can't be used because you can use this kind of whenever. Interesting. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. No. So overall, I don't know about bugs. Yeah, if there's any cool bug fixes, someone let me know. Um, overall, I mean, the patch, again, just an L, dude. I don't know. I'm just over these, like, basic patches. I, again, Jon Snow, devs, dev team, if you're listening, please don't only balance your game. You need to make game-changing decisions. Stuff like, we don't get full build ever uh, by, like, 40, 50 minutes unless you're dominating. Fix the gold gain. Raise it. Raise the gold gain to three or six if you want, whatever it is. Um, boost uh, last hitting. Make area gold a thing when, it, when there's two people in lane, especially as a support. Give the support more gold for staying with their carry. Um, they need to speed up minions. They need to make them tankier. They need to add the, the backpedaling as well as the strafing penalty. So 25%, 40%, 50% while shooting backwards, forwards, doesn't matter, right? You need to add these things because it's just making the game feel way more stale than it should. And I get we need content, new modes and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But no one wants to play a broken game. And again, just copy what Smite has. Copy their penalty system. Add a second tower, right? The game gets boring after like 20 minutes. No one wants to play anymore. It's so boring. It's just you sitting on an objective waiting for things to happen. Look at the dev matches. You guys, you start fighting at like level 11 or 12 with everybody and you never go back and start laning because there's no reason to you don't get a lot of gold um it, there's no punishment you can just sit out of lane the levels don't seem to matter or scale well like you need to make game changing stuff like gold gain and uh the back pedal you know stuff like that tower changes to increase the towers right make them tankier right add plates for the first eight minutes nine minutes so the tower doesn't get taken in four minutes which is easy to do by the way you can take this shit in four or five minutes it's ridiculous uh, I've taken inhibitors at 11 minutes with no, like, you know, with, with little effort. That stuff should, this is not a mobile game. Like, it's not. It should, and it, again, you have leagues pacing, though, when it comes to gold games. So you're still not full build, but the game is ending around 25 minutes with three items. That's not fun for anybody. No one wants to be, if you want the game to end at 25 minutes, you need to make the pacing better. In Smite, at 25 to 35 minutes, you're all full build by 35 minutes, generally. And at 30 minutes, a lot of you are going to be full build if you're doing decent. So it's like... You need to make your decide what you want your game to be. If you want it to be league pacing, make the game pace like league. But again, slow the game down if you're going to start fighting with two items and you're not going to get a lot of gold afterwards. It doesn't make the game fun. Stuff like that. Again, I'm just complaining about a, a different couple of different aspects. But there's so many different things you can add to make the game feel more fun and fluid, I guess, right? You have to fix the technological part, part of it as well. Stuff like collisions and desync needs to be fixed. Again, it's still... I'm getting stuck in the ground as Sereth. I'm getting like caught on corners. And like when I run into stuff, sometimes I fly randomly. The blink sometimes fucks up, doesn't go off. Like you need to fix the the technology part of things, right? The stuff that's running the server, the latency, whatever. 
fix all of that, even off of EU, I'm on NA, it just fucks up. So again, please, no more just balance patches. Like, you can make a balance patch, but outside of the balance patch, try adding a bigger... Oh, there was also a penalty added, apparently. They didn't, I don't think they say that here. I didn't see it. But uh, he showed it off on stream. There is a backpedal penalty here somewhere. I don't see it anywhere. Um... But yeah, like I said, you need to make it so... Oh, here we go. Now, before while facing forward, a 15% movement speed direction penalty was applied when moving in direct directions such as left, right, or backwards. Um, wait, 50% what we want? Left, right, or backwards? Hmm. Oh, it still is 15%. So wait, hold on. What? He said it was increased by 5%. He said it was 10%. It's increased by 5 But this is just 15%. But it's still 15%. But now it's left, right, backwards, or... It's so weird. While facing forward, a 15% movement speed redu uh, reduction penalty was applied when moving in direct directions, such as left, right, or backwards. However, no penalty was applied when moving diagonally backward. Now, a 50% movement speed reduction penalty is applied when moving left, right, or backward while the hero is facing forward. It's the same thing. There's no difference. I, they meant diagonal as well, right? But the point is, he said it was 10% on the stream. Again, translation error, I guess. Maybe it was always 15, or this is a typo. I don't know. Regardless, you literally need to add a bit. Like, put this at 40%. Try it. Just do it, right? Add a shooting, whatever you shoot, you know, 40%. Just add this in the game because it's not big enough, right? Wherever it is right now for everything, it's not big enough. You can strafe abilities easily. You can dodge uh, by moving backwards easily. Make this bigger. Make changes that matter, not just to a character, please. Because it's just stale. The game is stale. It's really boring. Not a lot of people are playing it. Everyone's playing Pal World, right? Like, they just need to start making changes that actually matter per patch. Like, I want to see changes per patch to be like, okay... This time they did something with a tower, and this time they did something with gold gain, and this time they did something with just itemization and a giant overhaul to character damage and, and made it so you're not getting one shot. And this time they, you know, they fixed the 20 minute mark or whatever, so like you're not feeling like shit, the objectives aren't as OP, whatever, you're not just sitting on objectives, the you're laning, they made minions speed up, they made minions tankier, right? Do stuff that matters to the actual game flow, not just balancing. That's basically it, that's my complaint for the day. Um, I'll be playing on, on at 12, so look out for me. Um, I am somewhat excited for Terra, but the patch is sleeper patch again, so that phase. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are excited for Terra. I'll see you tomorrow at 12. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.